Hi, it's Hillary here again. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, structure sort of in Frailing the Clawhammer Banjo. I learned basic bum ditty and it worked for me so I use that but I know it's kind of a little out of style but I wanted to talk about some of the different ways that people talk about what's going on with the banjo and how I usually have my students get started um, when they're playing so so here's what I do first of all you've got your banjo on your on your right leg um, with your neck not actually pointing off to the sky but more off to the horizon um, it's good to have a little bit of fingernail on like your index finger or your middle finger whichever one you think you're going to settle into using I use them both uh, on your right hand and it's good to have your nails cut short on your left hand because you're going to need to fret and it's a lot easier to do if your nails aren't too 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 long um, the basic bum ditty and we'll talk about the structure of this in a second let me just explain what I mean I mean that you you bring your hand up and you bring it down uh, and your thumb comes to rest on the fifth string so it doesn't matter if you're kind of brushing all the strings or if you're just hitting one of the strings your thumb comes down and it sticks there that's your bum you bring your whole hand up again bring it down again again your thumb just sticks to that fifth string and this time you pull it off and it goes bum diddy Bum, diddy. Some people will count it instead. They'll count one, two, and three, four. And that's one measure. One, two, and three, four, and. Now, you don't have to worry too much about which finger you're, you're, which string you're hitting in the very beginning. You hit them all. You want to get that motion. Now, it doesn't matter whether your thumb is kind of straight or a little bit cocked, but you want to kind of have, you want to not brace against the neck, I'm mean, against the pot of the banjo. You don't want your, your wrists or your forearm really stuck down here and then only be using your wrist in, in, a, in an ideal world. Now, not everybody can hold the banjo the same way because everybody's got different leg, uh, different arm lengths and torso lengths and and uh, banjo sizes and everything else so you're gonna have to work out something that works for you but try to keep try to keep these these tendons lined up as as well as you can so that you're not cocking your wrist this way or down this way and you're not bringing it out and you're not bringing it way in you want a neutral wrist okay so that said bum diddy everything's not going to happen on that first string this is the way the strings are numbered this is string one two three four five the short string is five you have a tendency to want to call it one because you look down and it's the first one you see but that's five it starts down there okay so notice what's happening to my hand right here uh, in terms of the distance between my index finger say and my thumb here's i'm hitting the first string i'm hitting the second string and i'm hitting the third string I'm hitting the fourth string. I don't have to look down. I know where my hand is and I know which string I'm playing because over over time I've learned basically what each of these distances sort of means in terms of which string it's it's hitting. So as you're practicing your bum ditties, try you know bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty bum. bum on different strings where you're trying to pick out which string you're going to hit. Another good thing to practice because a lot of tunes really and the way I play most of the time um, there's sort of a bum and then a brush and, and a thumb so it's bum ditty so the dit is tends to be a brush okay all right look at this chart is weird because when I look at it it's backwards but I think it won't be backwards to you when I'm playing it back I don't know how that works okay so take a look here this is one and two and three and four and that's bum diddy bum diddy 
Notice there's a nice little space here that you're not playing on necessarily. In a bum ditty, you're not playing there. You're not playing there. It's bum, ditty, bum, ditty. Okay? But music doesn't work that way. Lots of times there is some note you want to play that's right where you have that blank space. So there's lots of things you can do there. And I want to demo all of these options. Okay? One just says thumb on fifth. So there we're just talking about instead of bum, bum, diddy, we could be going diddy, diddy, diddy. Diddy, 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 diddy. So that's using a th your thumb. Diddy, diddy. So it's bum, me, diddy, bum, me, diddy, or whatever. Or bump, dee, diddy. Um, so that's one thing, and what's the next thing? Drop them. Another thing that you can do, and it's not really hard. It's no harder than anything else. So some people get a little scared of a drop thumb. I don't know why. Um, I remember it was, I have a lot of students it's really easy for. So um, so this is, in, so it's a one, two, three, four, one end, two end. Okay, so you're gonna go one, and then come down, you're gonna be hitting another string with your thumb, and then diddy, that diddy is perfectly normal. So it's bum and diddy, bum and diddy. Now, the, the trick of this is, just the way when you were doing a bum diddy, you came down and your thumb was already there, you want to come down and have your thumb be already on, on the note that you're going to pull off. And then just pull it off. If you do this and then reach for it, you've lost your, your compass. You don't know where this note is and you have to find it. If you go by how, how, how the distance here between here and... find it because your hand will learn. Um, so try to, in one motion of your hand, now I'm sh demonstrating this on the second string because that is the most common string for a drop thumb. So, um, and sometimes you'll have several drop thumbs in a row or whatever. Uh, this whole bum and ditty is just a basic outline. There are many variations and deviations from that. So don't think I'm saying all music follows that exact pattern, but but these are good things to learn. Okay, so that's a drop thumb. All right, what's next? What is next? Hammer on. This is another way to get to make a note uh, right there in this blank space or this blank space is it with a hammer on. And that's in, that. what that involves is usually playing a note, playing a string, and then hitting it with your, with some force with your left hand. Um, and you want to basically hit that string right behind the fret. Now you can practice hitting that string you can practice hitting it without doing anything with your right hand. You should be able to make a sound. Depending on your banjo, it's going to be either quieter or louder than somebody else's um, hammer-on. But um, Sometimes later on you'll be asked to um, play one string and then hammer on a different string. It's a little counterintuitive for some people, but you can do it. I'm hitting the first string, but I'm hammering on the third string. It's okay. Um, so, one and two, and all this hand is doing is a bum ditty. Bum ditty, bum ditty, bum. This hand is doing the same thing, a regular bum ditty. This hand is what's filling in that second, that first and. One and ditty, bum and ditty, okay? So, very similar to a hammer-on, but kind of the opposite of it is a pull-off. So, in this case, you start with your finger already on a note, 
Um, I tend to, my, I have a sore index finger all the time. So, there was a hammer on, let's try a pull off. So, all we're doing is, this, this finger's not doing it, let's try it, let's, I'll try to do it this way. So, this hand again is just doing a regular bum ditty. Bum ditty. But after this, your finger pulls off the, leaves the, the string, but with like a sort of a plucking motion. See how much better I can do this clearer with, with this finger. Now, if you're not getting good hammer-ons and pull-offs, check the position of this hand, because these fingers need to come down, like in a hammer-on, they need to come down like a hammer. Um, you need to have your thumb up here. Um, it's really hard to, well, it's hard for me to do it if my thumb is back here like I'm playing bluegrass. Yeah, I like to have my, my the string here, and the, 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 my fingers in general are pointing more like toward my nose, not to over my shoulder here. You want them aiming this direction, sort of. Um, uh, there are some chords that they're going to go up, but for the most part, most things, you want them in their open position to be kind of zoop, aiming up at my nose. Um, that's at least... That's where mine aim. Okay, so that's a pull off. There's one more. Um, one more. What did I have here? Fifth string is a melody note. Okay, so this is another thing you could do there, which is basically using this note instead of maybe fretting the first string at the fifth fret or something in this tuning. Oh, um, sorry, it's late. Um, so it's a little cluck old hen will go. So all we're doing here is one and two. One and. So bum and bum diddy bum and bum. Um, so I will use these terms when I'm teaching uh, teaching things, and I usually say them. I grew up partly in Pakistan and heard a lot of tabla players because my dad was a jazz pianist, but he liked to play with, with Pakistani musicians, and we had some fine musicians that would play with my dad. And, and uh, tabla players, I don't know if you've ever heard them, they, they have a language of dits and... and, and uh, just the sound of the different notes that they play when they hit the, the tabla. And it's a learning aid. It's also sometimes a kind of a fun, fancy, show-off-y thing, but the entertaining. But it's, it's primarily a learning aid, I think. And, um, and for some people, um, it helps to hear and it helps to actually say, um, hammer on, diddy, drop, thumb, pull off. And so you'll hear me saying things like that when I do some teaching. And um, uh, anyway, so there you go. I hope that's a good intro to some of those terms so that you'll know what I'm saying if you're looking at my videos.